Today, let's look at a full business solution built with a wealth of Power Platform tools. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on incident reports, right? So we're gonna build a Power Apps Canvas app to do the incident report so the user can enter it in. We're gonna store that data in Dataverse. We're gonna have Power Automate cloud flows. And the real awesome new piece of this here is we're gonna also use a Copilot Studio autonomous agent to triage those incidents for you. So we're gonna look at how this thing works end to end. And then in the end, I'm gonna show you where you can find how to build both of these apps and the autonomous agent all with step-by-step -step instructions. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so first up, we've got my lovely little Canvas app, right, designed for mobile, because incidents happen out in the field, not at your desk usually, though sometimes. So we're gonna jump in here and say, incident reporting new. For the location of the incident, right, we'll say that this was on Highway 12, like so. Incident date, we'll just go ahead and choose today. It seems easy enough to me. Severity, now, so this is one of those places where the users often get it wrong, right? So low, medium, or high. In this case, we're gonna say it was just low, right? Yeah, I'm fine, who cares? Because we find that people tend to do a bad job of self-evaluating, that's where we're gonna need that autonomous agent with Copilot Studio to come in and to look at this whole picture, right? The user just kind of filling out this data, they just wanna get this over with as fast as possible. And they're like, yeah, you know, I got both my arms and legs, it must be fine. So for category, we'll choose accident. For the description here, we'll get a little pop-up and we're gonna go ahead and enter in whatever we think happened. Had a small fender bender, no big deal. Maybe I was driving faster than I should, but I had to get the client meeting and I had to get donuts, right? Like bringing donuts to a client meeting never fails. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say, okay here. And I will mention as I'm going through this, like this is built on one of our customers. So we had a conversation about what they wanna do with incident reporting. This is not what we built for them, but this was kind of what got spawned out of that that I decided to build for all of you to take advantage of. So this is kind of rooted in, you know, something we got a request for. Okay, witness statements here, we'll hit the plus. And so we'll just fill this out real quick. All right, and so it was Buddy, you know, he said, hey, here it is. You know, he wanted some donuts. I should have left sooner. He's basically blaming me. Well, what do you do? That's what dogs do, right? So we'll say save. And then here we'll jump out, right? And we can have multiple witnesses. Notice that it is a one-to-many relationship. So there's actually a table for the incident and there's a separate table for the witnesses. So we could have zero witnesses. We could have a hundred witnesses. We could just keep adding them in there. The same holds true for the photos. We're just gonna grab one photo real quick. So we hit the plus, tap to add a picture. And of course on my phone, it would have popped up the actual camera control. But here we're just gonna grab a image that I grabbed, you know, had generated of two cars and a little, little, little fender bender there. Probably a little bit more than just a little fender bender. There you go, so there is our incident. We have filled it out, Phew, I'm done. I can go about my day, get back to getting those donuts, right? So we hit submit, the app does its thing, and off to the system it all goes. So now for the customers, it's always a question, okay, what now, right? And so I've done this a few ways. I have one customer where I have an app like this and then there's basically that Power App Submit button just says, hey, if the user said low, don't do nothing with it. If the user said hi, email the CEO. Like it's literally that extreme, but it's all derived from what the user chose. So we see that. We'll sometimes see people say, well, you know, I wanna have a flow do that processing. So then they'll just have a flow trigger when this new event gets created. And flows are great, as long as everything is very linear. And once again, you're willing to make your decisions based off what did the user say? So, you know, the user ranked it this way, we do this, et cetera, et cetera. But what I wanted is I wanted to be able to reason over the data. So what I wanna do is I wanna use Copilot Studio. I wanna build myself an autonomous agent that says, hey, every time one of these gets generated, I want you to think about what's happening here. Take the witness statement, take the pictures, take the, uh, user's categorization, like put all that into the hopper and then determine is this really a low, medium or high scenario. So let's switch over to Copilot Studio and kind of look at what that agent would be like. So over here, when you build a Copilot Studio autonomous agent, what it's really about is creating a trigger, right? So down here at the bottom, there's a trigger and those are the same triggers that we use in flows, right? It's actually a cloud flow that runs that is triggered when a new incident report has been added. So every time a new incident report gets added, it is going to then trigger the flow and the flow says, hey, pass this information over to our agent so the agent can do its job, right? That's how autonomous agents get triggered in most cases. All right, so if we look here, if we click on it, you can see the flow is really that simple. When a new row gets added to that table, send a prompt 
And so here, this is where you'll want to sculpt what you're sending, right? So in this case, I'm like, hey, here's the incident row ID, right? It's the primary key of the incident that I want you to kind of go and use. But you can do whatever you know how to do with flow here. So if you wanted to have this go ahead and process some other information, if you wanted to have it send no notifications when this got done, right? Anything you know how to do with flow is possible. And the only key for getting the autonomous agent to run is somewhere in that flow, you need the step of, you know, send a prompt over to our triage agent. And then, you know, what data do you want to send it? Because that's what it's going to action on. Okay, so that's the flow. We'll switch back over. Okay, so now that it's triggered, what's going to happen is it's going to follow its instructions. So let's hit edit here, make these a little easier to read. And so here I've just broken it down into some steps, right? So the first thing I want you to do is to get all the information. So get the uh, parent information, right? The header, the, the, the parent, you know, incident, like location and categorization from the user, the date, all that stuff. Then get all the related information from the witnesses and then get the ID for the related incident photo. So pull together the first round of information because what I want you to then do is get the photo description using the incident response photo description. And so the way that's doing all this is with actions, right? So actions, or they're very quick, soon gonna change this to say tools up here. Either way, you'd get the same place. But so we go to actions. So you can see that I've created these different actions, which are the same actions we use in Power Apps and Power Automate to do the things, right? So get the incident report parent information. If we click on that, right, we've got some name stuff. The inputs is really what we're after, right? Like, hey, here's my dataverse environment, here's the table, and then use the row ID provided in the initial prompt. So that's what I'm telling it to get the data in. We also only pull back certain data, but we won't get into those details right now. But so that's how it fetches the parent information. And if you were just to change this to the whole um, witnesses one, right? So this is for the witness information. It's going to be the same type of thing. Except this time it's a get items in Dataverse. And, but look, there's my environment, there's my table, and then it's filtering out the rows. It's creating an OData query to find all the related records to that parent. Same type of thing for the, the photos as well, right? So that's how it's pulling the information back. So then if we go back here to overview and let's hit edit again here. So that was getting pulling in the info. Then we want to get the information uh, back about the photo, right? Because it has the photo, but now we want it to see what's in the photo. And so the Copilot Studio agent can't do that on its own. So what's actually gonna happen is over here under actions again, you can see that this particular one is a flow. So it is going to run a flow every time it needs to do this. And if we just click right here, it'll open up the flow for us. And so the flow gets triggered by the agent calling it. All right, it downloads the file using the download Dataverse action. And then what we're gonna do is use an AI builder prompt to say, hey, grab that photo and let's hit edit here so you can see the prompt. And basically this is saying, look at the photo and then give me the details. And I use the details here, right? I might gonna read them to you, but you can hit pause if you wanna read them. But I paint the picture of like, hey, I'm gonna give you a photo, here's what I'm after. Here's like how I want you to paint the scene. And then the last little piece, finally provide your thoughts on the seed, the mood or urgency because I want it to help shape that decision in a minute on, is it a you know bad accident or a, you know, is it a little finger cut? No one cares, okay? So that's how all that works. So let's switch back over to our agent. And so then back here to our overview, edit, okay? And so then once it's done that, we're gonna go and take the photo description that it just got and wrote it, write it back to Dataverse, right? If we're gonna get the description, we might as well save that for later in case we wanna see what it was. And then we wanted to evaluate the incident using the knowledge, right? So there is actually a knowledge section here. We're using a document from a SharePoint document library that kind of says, hey, when you're evaluating incidents, use these criteria, right? Like, was it a major injury? Was it a loss of money? Was it a property damage? Like, it's a bunch of rules or, you know, knowledge around how we would categorize an incident based on all the information it just pulled together. Now, the reason that I put that knowledge into a SharePoint document library was so that that way the users, if they want to update it, right? They're like, hey, it always miscategorizes these. I want to add another paragraph. Great. Just go edit the document in SharePoint. The next time the agent runs, it'll check that document and it'll get your updates. Anytime that you've got content like that, that you know you want to be evolving all the time, don't hard code that in the agent. Put it in a knowledge location and point the agent at that. That way your users can just modify that content as necessary. That's right, a little pro tip on the way, okay? So that's how it knows how to evaluate the information. Um, we then also send off an email, you know, with our update.
And then finally, we change the status based on all the information and we update that original parent record and based on whether it was major personal injury, property damage. Uh, if not, you know, we set it depending. So that's how we set all this up, right? So that is your end to end business intelligence, right? We've got an app to do the incident reporting and then we're letting an autonomous agent help us triage these. So we're not just escalating paper cuts to the CEO. I have a customer that does that because they let the users do whatever they want, right? Paper cups high, they hurt. So that is that. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, that was a good overview, but I want to know how to build all this step by step, okay? That is fair. So first up, there is a link to the video on how to build the Power App end to end, right? So it's one I put on YouTube, it's about 30 minutes, um, but it's all the little nitty gritty of how we put that one together. Secondly, if you want to build the autonomous agent to do the triage, then that is a different link over there or up there. I don't know. It's somewhere up there. Um, and so that is a uh, course also on YouTube uh, that Microsoft and I work together to put, put out. And that course is all about how we use our Power Apps and Power Automate skills to build agents. And so it's going to walk you through building this exact agent. Boom. And then, right? Like how fun is that? So. What do you think? Questions, comments, things you'd like to see me do more of? Like, is there anything in here like, oh, what if you had done X or Y? I'm always open up to ideas. Just leave them below, right? I am happy to accommodate those. And of course, if I can do anything to help you with this, right? We have consulting services around Power Apps, Power Automate, AI Builder, Copilot Studio. I've got training classes, both in-person and live classes. You just let us know what we can do to help. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.